My dear friends, my fellow believer, good morning to you. Peace and joy into your heart this morning. Welcome, welcome to the studios of the Evangelist Ministry. Welcome. <clears throat> from the studios, from the studios of the Evangelist Ministry, we spread the good news about Jesus Christ and his saving grace. Our mission is to lead people into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ. My dear friends, the topic of this morning the just shall live by faith. Let's open the Bible. <clears throat> Let's open the Bible. And we'll read the book of Romans chapter 1, verse 10 to the 17. <clears throat> the Bible said this way. Making requests if by it any means now at the length I might have prosperous journey by the will of God to come unto you for I long to see you that I might impart unto you some spiritual gift to the end you might be established that is that I, <clears throat> I might be comfort together with you by mutual faith both of you and me now i would not have you ignorance brother that of times i purpose to come unto you but was let he wrote that i might have some fruit among you also even as among other Gentiles. I am debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. So as much as in me is, I am ready <clears throat> to preach the gospel to you that are in Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believe 
to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, <clears throat> as is written, the man just shall live by faith. My dear friends, good morning to you, my dear friends. Good morning. The just shall live by faith. It's a precious subject, my friends. It is, it is a, a precious subject, my friends. The Bible said in the book of Romans, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As is written, the just shall live by faith. Romans 117. My dear friends, I want you to come into the understanding that a simple faith in Jesus Christ can do for us what great learning cannot do it. Yes, my friends. How many of you have so much knowledge about the Bible? Many of us, so many of you guys know the Bible from the index to the maps. From the first page to the last page. A very poor faith. But allow me to tell you this morning, a simple faith in Jesus Christ can, can do for us what great learning cannot do it. According to the gospel of Apostle Paul, a righteousness from God is revealed. A righteousness that is by faith from the first step of faith to the last step of faith. Then, my dear friends, as a good Christians, we have to learn that the just will live by faith alone. Then as a Christian, we must reawake, reawake our faith and trust in what we learn to believe since day one when we accept Jesus Christ as a Savior and Lord. Clearly. That was your first step of faith, accepting Jesus Christ as a Savior and Lord. Then, when the time passed by, then as you, you grow spiritually, your faith growing and growing a step by step, faith to faith, my friends. My dear friends, by faith the believers has been saved from the guilt and penalty of sin. Then, by faith alone, the believers is being saved from the habit and dominion of the spiritual nature. Yes, indeed, my friends. And then, the believer is to be saved in the sense of entire conformity to Christ Jesus. Because, Salvation is by grace, through faith in Jesus Christ. It is a free gift and holy without words. But everything goes in order. And it is first, first salvation, then works. Because according to the book of James, the Bible said, even so faith, if have no work, is dead, being alone. James 2.17. Which, which means, my fellow friends, in the same way, faith by itself, it is not accompanied by action, is dead. Do I make myself understand it? Which means, my fellow believers, in the same way, faith by itself, if it's not a companion, by action, your faith is dead. Period. <clears throat> we can say, I believe in God. Oh, you can say it all day long if you want. 
I believe in God. I have faith. You can say that all day long. But without a good testimony of faith, your belief or your words are dead because even the devil believed that there is a God. So the unsaved, my friends. So words doesn't mean anything. I remember my pastor just to say that talk is cheap. It is true, my friends. Even so, faith, if it have not worked, is dead being alone, said the book of James, chapter 2, verse 17. Which means, my fellow believers, in the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. As I say before, we can say, I believe in God. I have faith. You can say that all day long, but without good testimony of faith, your belief or words are dead because even the devil believe that there is a God. So do you say, my friends? Do you understand? I hope that you understand. So, my dear friends, salvation is in three tenses. Let's see the first one. First tense, we mentioned that the believer has been saved from the guilt and penalty of sin. Well, remember, example, we can see an example in the book of Luke. The Lord Jesus Christ is talking. He said, and he said to the women, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Have that verse in mind. Luke 7, 50. <clears throat> and he said to the woman, thy faith has saved thee. Go in peace. Indeed. When Jesus would justify the woman in the eyes of Simon, he points to her work because only through her works could Simon see the proof of her faith. But when Jesus sent the woman away in peace, he points to her faith, not her works. He said, and he said to the woman, thy faith hath saved you. Go in peace. Do you understand? <clears throat> so, when Jesus sent the woman away in peace, he pointed to her faith, not to her work. Very simple. Jesus said to the woman, your faith has saved you at this moment. Go in peace. His own work, his own works can never be to the believer his own ground assurance which must rest upon the works of Jesus Christ. Then, the Bible it is telling me that the fruit of righteousness will be peace. Do you understand? Then the Bible is telling me that the fruit of righteousness will be peace. The effect of righteousness will be quietness and confidence forever, which is faith and trust in Jesus Christ. That's a First tense. Second tense is we mentioned the believers being saved from the habit and dominion of sins, according to the book of Romans. The book of Romans said, For sin shall not have dominion over you. For you are not under the law, but under grace. Romans says 6 14, which means. <clears throat> which means the controlling principle and the life of any believer. Listen to this, which means that the controlling principle and the life of any believer after he accepts Jesus Christ as a Savior and Lord is the reign of grace that set us free from the reign of sin and transform us into the likeness of Jesus Christ. Can you believe that? 
The Bible said that for sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. Romans 6.14. Allow me to tell you again, which means that the controlling principle in the life of any believer after he accepts Jesus Christ as a Savior and Lord, the reign of grace that set us free from the, from the reign of sin and transform us into the likeness of Jesus Christ. It's not wonderful. Let's have in mind that after we accept Jesus Christ as a Savior and Lord, <clears throat> the controlling principle in the life of any believer is the reign of grace that set us free from the reign of sin and transform us into the likeness of Jesus Christ. Then sin shall not be your master anymore because you are not under the law, but you are under the grace of God. Your master will be Jesus Christ. My fellow believers, we have an obligation. You and I, you and I, we have an obligation, but it's not to the sinful nature to live according to it. But if you live according to the sinful nature, you will die spiritually. You will die spiritually. But if you live by the spirit, you put to death the misdeed of the body and then you will live forever. We see the, the first tense, second tense, and the third tense. Remember, <clears throat> we mentioned the believer is to be saved in the sense of entire conformity to Christ. Wow! According to Hebrews, the Bible said, for you have need of endurance so that when you have done the will of God, you might receive what is promised. Hebrews 10, 36. Which means, my dear friends, that God's law are entirely, entirely written. Law are written in their hearts of the hearts of every believer. Yes. Which means that God's law are written in the hearts and the hearts and the hearts of every believers after you accept Jesus Christ as a Savior and Lord. So, the Christian followed the full step of Jesus Christ who came to do God's will. Then you need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he has promises. But the righteous one will live by faith. And if he back off, the Lord will not be pleased when him. But we as a born again Christians, we are not backing off. We don't like to be destroyed, but we are those who believe and are saved. Bible saying in the book of Hebrews, now the just shall live by faith. By faith. But if any man draw back, my soul have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Hebrews 10, 38. But my dear friends, <clears throat> from faith to faith, an expression that Apostle Paul emphasized. That at every point of its influence, the gospel depends on faith, not on work. Remember that at every point of its influence, the gospel depends on faith, not works. When Apostle Paul emphasized that the church shall live by faith, life contrasts with the spiritual death and life in the sense of continuing in fellowship with God. From first to the last, the godly living means trusting in God and depending on His grace. Yes, my friends, from first to the last, 
the godly living means trusting in God and depending on his grace. But the question that came this morning, my friends, the question that is coming this morning to you and to me, my friends, how many, but I mean, how many, how many of us trusted in God's and depending on his grace? Hello, do you hear my question? My question is, how many of us trusting in God and depending on his grace. That's why we cannot forget the promise we have. For instance, regardless of how badly you might seem to be losing the battle, do you understand? <clears throat> For instance, regardless of how badly you think you might seem to be losing the battle, the Lord said, do my will, do my will, and leave the outcome to me. The Lord said, I will make sure that eventually you, you will be the winner. So, we can confidently say, the Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what men shall do unto me. Hebrews 13, 6. My dear friends, such a tragedy, such a way to be, will not only keep us from beating ourselves with stress, sadness, affliction, and disappointments in life, it will lead us to a glorious victory. And we get to know that our works and faith and trust in Jesus Christ is not in vain. As a good example, shall we open the Bible and we read the book of Hebrews. The book of Hebrews said, now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Hebrews 10, verse 38. And 39, which means, my dear friends, which means that faith fix or sight. Yes, my friend, faith fix or sight on the one who is coming, hoping and his future appears. Faith receives God's verdict. Then faith does not draw back in the face of, of sufferings. Then the essence of faith consists in, in receiving what God has revealed. Yes, my friend, because the Bible said, now the just shall live by faith alone. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But my dear friends, for sure I know that we are not of them who draw back unto perdition but of them that believe to saving of the soul. My dear friends, which means that faith fix or sight on the one who is coming, hoping in his future appearance, Jesus Christ. Faith receives God's verdict. Then faith does not draw back in the face of sufferings. No, my friends. Then the essence of faith consists in and receiving what God has revealed already. My dear friends, it might be defined as the trust in, in, in the God of the scripture and in Jesus Christ whom he has sent. Then the particular use of faith gives rise to its secondary definition. First, Let's think about first definition. For salvation is a personal trust. Apart from meritorious works. And the Lord Jesus Christ. And delivery for our offense. And, and race again for our justification. Second definition. 
as used in prayers. Faith is the confidence that we have in him that we ask anything according to his will. He will hear us. He also comprehend us exactly what we ask him for in faith. And third, as used in reference to use to unseen things of which a scripture speaks. Faith gives substance to them so that we act upon the conviction of their reality. Now, faith is assurance of things all for the conviction of things not seen. My dear friends, I, I believe that we can get into conclusion this morning about the just shall live by faith. Let, let's think about that. Many people love to study. Many people like to read the Bible on a daily basis. It's all right, my friends. But don't forget one thing I will tell you this morning. <clears throat> Bible is theory and practice. It is, my friends. Theory and practice. Yes, my friend. The Bible said in the book of Romans, for there is righteousness of God's revealed from faith to faith, as is written, the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith, according to Romans 1, 17. But my dear friends, I agree, the Bible is the most wonderful book to read in daily basis. But let's not forget, let's not forget, that is, Theory and practice. So the Bible talks about that. But simple faith in Jesus Christ can do for us what great learning cannot do. It. According to the gospel of Apostle Paul, a righteousness from God is revealed. A righteousness that is by faith from the first step of faith to the last step of faith. Then as good Christians, we have to learn that the just will live by faith alone. Then, as a Christian, we must reawake our faith and trust in what we learn to believe. Since day one, when we accept Jesus Christ as a Savior and Lord. Clearly, that was your first step of faith, accepting Jesus Christ as a Savior and Lord. And then, as you grow spiritually, Your faith grow and grow step by step, faith to faith. My dear friends, let's think about this. Let's think about this, my friends. My dear friends, and might be defined as this way. The trust in, the, in God of the scripture and Jesus Christ whom he has sent. This particular use of faith gives rise to its secondary definition. There is two definitions, uh, two, three definitions of faith. First, for salvation is a personal trust, apart from meritorious, uh, meritorious works in the Lord Jesus Christ, as delivery for our of offenses and rise again for our justification. Second, as used in prayer, faith is the confidence that we have in him that we ask anything according to his will. He will hear us. He also comprehend us exactly what we ask for faith. And third, as used in reference to unseen things of which scripture is speak. Faith gives softened to them so that we act upon the conviction of their reality. Now faith. And the assurance of things hope for the conviction of things not seen. Let's get into our conclusion, my friends. We get to our conclusion this morning. Amen. The conclusion is this. My fellow believers, for the time being, only faith can see the future. Yes, my friends. Take it from me. Then my faith believers, my fellow believers, for the time being, only faith can see the future. Have that in mind. Only faith can see the future as it received 
the promise of God. Then if we open the book of Hebrews, one thing is very essential. One thing is very important in our personal life. The Bible said, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarded of them that diligently seek him. Hebrews 11, 6. Which, being, which means, my, my fellow believers, that faith is absolute necessity in, in our personal life. It's absolute necessity in the life of every believer. Faith is very important, whether to perceive the things for which we should hope and understand that God is one, one creator of all. Then, praise God as the criterion of appropriate worship. Equally important is the truth that every Christian has a personal, but a very personal calling to please God in daily basis. Then, what do we learn today, my friends? Oh, you tell me what we learned today. I learned so much in this morning. So much, my friends. Then, what do we learn today, in this morning? That the just shall live by faith alone. The Lord said, just do my will and leave the outcome to me. I will make sure that you, that you eventually, you will be the winner. My dear friends, God is good. Yes. So we can confidently say, the Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what men shall do unto me. Thank you, my dear friends. God bless you. Thanks for the opportunity that you allow me to go into your home this morning. I hope and I pray that this message will be a blessing to you. Yes, my friends. My dear friends, God bless you. And God bless America.